How's it going guys? So this is a challenging question for me to discuss because I could do a 45 minute oral presentation on every little fucking detail, especially for some of you guys studying for step one who want a more in-depth discussion. But some of you, especially for 2CK, I know you don't want a fucking extended clip. You want me to keep things concise. So I will meet you guys somewhat halfway in the middle, stay consolidated. So before we get started, allow me to be my frequent asshole. Tell you to subscribe my channel, I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram, recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the fucking clip. So 70 year old dude, two month history progressive, shortness of breath and fatigue, elevated heart rate at 100, respiratory rate elevated at 20, should be 12 to 16 per minute. JVD, crackles in both lung fields, two on six ejection murmur, auscultated at left sternal border, S3 heart sound, dark stool that is fecal cold blood positive, super fucking low hemoglobin at six grams per deciliter, should be 13 to 17.5 in non menstruating women and men, 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. Normal white blood cells at 8,000 should be 4 to 11,000. Bicarb normal at 24, should be 22 to 28. You say, why is the bicarb written there? What, what's the significance of that? It's because low bicarb can reflect lactic acidosis with causing metabolic acidosis and plenty of 2CK surgery questions in particular where we get ischemia, okay? In the setting of shock, super fucking uh, important that you know you can get low bicarb. It can be any shock, hypovolemic, cardiogenic, septic, important tangential discussion. X-ray of the chest shows enlarged cardiac silhouette, pulmonary vascular congestion. Ejection fraction is 70%, should be 55 to 70. So the question wants to know most likely diagnosis. So let's just walk through the answer choices. As I said, could be long fucking discussion, I'll stay consolidated. Choice A, aortic stenosis with angiodysplasia, aka Haiti syndrome, H-E-Y-D-E syndrome, wrong fucking answer. Now look, this dude has a two on six ejection murmur auscultate at the lesternal border, which could be aortic stenosis in some vignettes. It's not, okay, in this case. This is called a flow murmur or a functional murmur. It's due to the high heart rate. Now this can occur across the pulmonic valve, across the aortic valve, super high yield, especially in 2CK vignettes that you know in the setting of uh, infection, uh, sepsis, uh, trauma, surgery, even uh, sometimes just pregnancy or even severe anemia where the heart rate goes up to compensate because you have insufficient oxygenation. You can get a transient flow murmur. Okay, this is also really common in pediatrics, okay, with infections, as I said. So, uh, but aortic stenosis, uh, for whatever fucking reason, uh, increased pressure backup can cause tortuosity of the superficial vessels in the large bowel, leading to painless bleeding per rectum. Angiodysplasia is one of the most common causes of uh, bleeding per rectum in elderly. So, we think diverticular bleeds, colorectal cancer, of course, is a red flag angiodysplasia, okay? I've seen this in a step one level question that's offline where they say dude ha argues with his wife, elderly dude argues with his wife, gets chest pain, and he has blood per rectum. I'm not fucking joking, okay? That's angiodysplasia, Hades syndrome. So let's just continue moving through here. Diastolic dysfunction, wrong fucking answer. And the reason you know instantaneously that this is the wrong answer is because this would cause an S4 heart sound due to a stiffened left ventricle, not a fucking S3 heart sound, okay? S3 almost always means systolic dysfunction in USMLE, okay? Which in this case, systolic dysfunction is also the wrong fucking answer. Now, S3, usually systolic dysfunction. Yes, it can occur in pregnancy. Yes, it can occur due to high preload in high endurance athletes. But you need to know, just know as a foundational concept that S4 heart sound, stiff left ventricle, diastolic dysfunction, preserved ejection fraction. If you have uh, an S3 heart sound, that's usually systolic dysfunction, and you've got dilated ventricle and you have decreased ejection fraction, okay? That distinction is really important. Diastolic dysfunction, I mean, hypertrophic or restrictive cardiomyopathies could be due to things like uh, amyloidosis from multiple myeloma. I've made other clips on that, super fucking high yield, okay? Fibrosis, history of radiation to the chest. So... Let's just keep moving through here. Correct answer is high output cardiac failure. Now look, there's an S3 heart sound, but we have a high normal ejection fraction. Ejection fraction 55 to 70. If they want systolic dysfunction, they're going to give you an S3 heart sound with a low ejection fraction. Now this dude has JVD, right heart failure sign. He has crackles in both lung fields. That's a left heart failure sign. So this on the surface looks like congestive heart failure, where if he had a low ejection fraction, you'd say, yeah, that's just like systolic dysfunction. Uh, leading to congestive heart failure. Uh, but you, 
the ejection fraction is clearly at the upper end of normal here. Okay, this is high output cardiac failure. He has low hemoglobin, super low hemoglobin. His heart rate goes up to compensate. He's an elderly male, probably has uh, just senile atherosclerosis, where he has decreased ability to handle a prolonged uh, elevation in heart rate. And that's led to, unfortunately, decompensation of the myocardium and this left plus right heart failure pattern here, okay? We're eliminating to get there. We've eliminated uh, choices A and B so far, as well as choice E. And you say, well, what about ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm? Look, I mean, this would cause severe retroperitoneal pain. This would go to the back, okay? And it would cause low blood pressure, yes. You could theoretically, if you're in stage one shock, I mean, you could have uh, a maintenance of blood pressure, but he's had a two month history. This is not an acute picture, okay? It doesn't explain the blood in the stool. This guy probably has some sort of either maybe a diverticular bleed, maybe cancer. We don't necessarily know. It's not so critical that we know the ideology of why he's losing the blood. The point is, this is not a uh, severe pain radiating to the back. It's not a rupture of abdominal aortic aneurysm. And we've eliminated to just simply get say, well, he's got a high normal ejection fraction with heart failure signs. He's got an S3 heart sound, some, a bit of dilatation there from increased preload, the high heart rate. High output cardiac failure is the best answer. This is a, this, I said this is a medium difficulty question for internal medicine and that's expected for you to know this, but it's a challenging question overall. I mean, if you're studying for step one, because it, it requires a lot of general reasoning and knowledge base that you're piecing together in order to arrive at the best answer, okay? Rather than instantaneously looking at the vignette and saying, oh yeah, obviously it's that one, okay? I mean, you have to do a bit of reasoning here as we walked through. You know the deal, I'm gonna continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time, that's it.